Alright, we are back. I was trying to find a way to focus in on all the, the stuff that I have left. You know, the, the actual heavy lifting, so to speak, is done, the motor's in, but at this point there's a ton of odds and ends. Uh, I just added up the... I put a big order in at Summit for a lot of the things that I needed, um, and I think I'm at getting close to like 500 bucks of just stuff that I, I knew I would need at some point, but I hadn't ordered yet. Um, so long story short, I made a list. I think it'll be easier to focus just running down this list of things. Um, a lot of it's straightforward. I'll probably, I will definitely end up adding to it. You know, I have a full-time job, so this is uh, kind of a nights and weekends type thing. So basically every day I'm just going to pick one of these and try to check it off the list. Um, today I am, I think I'm going to focus on this one. So we're going to look at, I... I used the factory Chevy van oil pan. I That was probably just a mistake on my part. I thought they cleared. Um, I had seen some other people who did this swap, and I'd seen some other people who did this swap, and um, I guess didn't see them swap out the oil pan, uh, but I guess off camera, <laughs> off camera they probably did. Um, so I thought it would fit. Uh, it does not. It just grazes the cross member, so I'm going to notch out the cross member. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be an issue from a um, you know, chassis strength standpoint. Um, this cross member kind of looks like a, an auxiliary one. Um, it's behind sort of the main cross member where the, the, you know, steering rack and, and suspension pickup points are and whatnot. So I think a small notch in this will have zero impact, but yeah, I got to measure, notch it out, probably give it a quick coat of paint and then uh, slap it back in. So hopefully that will be crossed out by the end of today. Quick update on the cross member. Um, measured, taped it out, cut, took a nice, nice little chunk out of it, which is this bad boy here. Should be somewhat strong. Um, if I knew how to weld, I would definitely box that in, but, uh, that will have to be in phase two. Um, test fit it, it clears probably about an eighth to a quarter of an inch, um, top and bottom. So I'm going to hit this up with the flap disc, probably uh, a couple files, and then probably hit it with a quick coat of paint, clean it, paint it, and this one will be done. All right, and here it is all finished up. The cross member is painted, fresh coat of satin black, test fit it, looks good. So this thing, I'm going to leave it out uh, for clearance reasons, but towards the end of, uh, you know, wiring and, and fuel lines and things of that nature, I'll, uh, I'll put it back in. So I can check this one off the list. All right, intake manifold is back on, new gaskets installed, all torqued down in the right sequence. I also got uh, the, all the injectors, uh, all the injectors and the coils, uh, the wiring done there, throttle body's done. Um, so pretty much the whole top end of the motor is wired, except for a few sensors in the back. All right, for the starter cable, sorry, I have a fan on. It's kind of hard to hear. For the starter cable, um, you have to use the factory Colorado um, Colorado battery harness, I guess you would call it. So this also has the BCM, um, which you need to keep. There's a plug on the, the current harness for this. Um, long story short, the starter wire is not long enough. Um, so I basically need to extend that. Uh, cheapest and easiest way I found to do it is one of these battery extension cables from Walmart. It was like 12 bucks. Um, this is an extra 45 inches, which should get me there. So I, I'm debating what I'm going to do, but I think I'm going to cut off this connector, um, splice this wire in, probably just use this for the starter. Hopefully that's not too big of a hole and I get a good contact. Um, and that should be it. So I will update once I'm done with this. All right, starter is in and wired up. I ended up going under the motor this way um, because the starter wiring was way too close to the header on the other side. So let me go back there and I'll show you guys what it looks like from that side. But this works pretty well. I'm actually using a P-clip to hold it in place here, um, which keeps it off the oil pan, keeps it in a good spot. Uh, this is actually the mounting where the old power steering lines were gonna go and I know they're not gonna go there still. Um, so shouldn't, shouldn't be an issue there. 
here's what the starter wiring looks like for under, underneath. So these are all the current wires, these three right here. Um, this is the one that I did today for the starter power, um, the extension that I made. I put some heat wrap on the end of it. Um, and then you can see this is where it comes from in the front. The P-clip is kind of right over here. Um, so overall starter wiring looks pretty good, should clear everything. I did have it routed up this way, but it basically sat right next to the header. I couldn't really find a good way to keep it off the header. Um, it's like right in there. So um, I think it'll work better under the motor, but it remains to be seen. We will see how, uh, how things pan out as we, we continue to make progress. I haven't talked about the headers much. Um, Basically, the headers I used are S10 swap headers off eBay. Um, there's a guy who posted a, something on Grassroots Motorsports um, related to these headers. He was doing a similar swap, bought these headers off eBay, and said that they fit pretty well, aside from um, some various uh, modifications, I'll call them. So passenger side, I'll go under and show you guys in a minute. That side fit pretty well. These are bolted up, just have to torque it down. So that side's pretty much wrapped up. Um, driver side, not completely wrapped up, but close. I have to put one more bolt in and then torque. Um, this side was, was difficult. Driver side was not easy. Basically you have to um, make clearance for the steering shaft. You have to uh, clearance two of the brake lines, and then you have to also deal with um, the backside of the motor mount, which I ended up having to trim pretty significantly to get these things to, to fit. Um, so I will go underneath and I'll show you guys. Overall, these headers only cost me $93. Um, that was after making an offer to the seller. Um, so they're cheap. Um, you, you compare the, you know, to like the, the Doug Thorleys that tons of people run, those are like eight, 900 bucks. They're hard to get. So I saved myself a ton of money, but it was a lot of extra work. Um, and probably I'm, I'm not out of the woods. I'm sure there's gonna be some further work that I have to do. I'll show you underneath the clutch line, basically it's right in the flow of the exhaust path. So that's gonna be something that I have to troubleshoot. But this side was a lot of trial and error, a lot of moving stuff around. I ended up taking the fuel line and placing that on this side of, um, kind of butted up almost against the transmission. And that would just gave me the most clearance. And then I'm gonna run an AN line from here, um, from here over. Um, and then I, I ended up moving this harness. I'm not sure what, it, that's part of the body harness. I ended up moving it actually behind the steering shaft and I'm gonna make sure it's nice and, and clearanced. Um, so there's a lot of things I kind of had to play with and move. And I think I've, I've gotten to the point where I have a good amount of space around everything and if I don't then I, I dealt with it in some other way. Um, so first modification to the actual header is right here. Um, used a, a good old fashioned hammer. You can see in there and put a little um, ding kind of in the back of that. Um, at the same time I cut off the head of the bolt on the steering shaft. So that gives me a solid, uh, I don't know, probably uh, three-eighths of an inch or so, um, which should be fine. Hopefully, hopefully it's not hit. Um, I will show you guys underneath and show you the other mods that you have to do these headers to get them to, to fit up. All right, we're under the Colorado here. So this is the fitment of the header um, from underneath. So right here, kind of difficult to see, but I, I had to do a lot of work to clearance um, for the header here. It's, it's not pretty. I had disconnected a fuel line and it smells like gas under here. So I really did not want to throw a bunch of sparks, which meant I, meant I didn't use the angle grinder, um, which was a lot of just work using other tools, trying to fit them in here. I ended up using a mix of a, a Dremel, a hacksaw. I used a sawzall, some files. So yeah, not extremely pretty. Um, you know, if I was doing this again, I would have just lopped this off in two seconds with the motor out of here and cleaned it up and probably given it a little paint and whatnot and, and it would have looked 10 times better. So I'm not the happiest, but things fit. So at this point, that's kind of all that matters. The headers are definitely still close here, um, but I think, I'm, I think I'm in good shape. I don't think, uh, 
don't think I'll be hitting anything. So, so that's the motor mount piece. I also dinged the headers here. Um, so that's the second place you have to ding. And then the third place is over here by the brake lines. Uh, they would pretty much touch the brake lines if you didn't uh, ding them. And then I also bent the brake lines as far as I was comfortable with this way. And then also threw some vibrant um, heat, um, heat wrap on them. So um, I don't think those are gonna be an issue. I like where the outlet on the headers is. So not really issues there, but the, the main problem I'm having now is you can see this is my clutch line and it wants to be right in the path of the exhaust. So that's gonna be the next problem to solve is, is trying to figure that out. I'm gonna to try to probably put the line above it, wrap it, and then also have a turn down here, like right, basically have a turn down right away, and I think that will keep it away, um, but I may end up having to move to a braided clutch line to, to completely solve the problem. So um, that will be one of the next things that I tackle. But um, headers are done, I'll show the passenger side. I um, overall am happy with my purchase, saved a bunch of money, but it was a lot of work, probably, about eight hours or so to get both these things in and uh, fit it up properly. All right, in terms of passenger side header, it fit almost perfectly, a little bit of a pain to get it in there. Um, the only thing I did do is I initially made a little dent here in the header because it was just, it was probably a 16th of an inch um, away from this, uh, I don't know what this is, maybe one of the probably upper control arm mount. Um, I looked at it for a while, it cleared, but I just kind of got like weirded out about it. So I ended up taking an angle grinder and just taking, um, you know, about a quarter inch of that bracket off. So now I have a nice five eighths inch, something like that um, gap. So I don't think, you know, if the motor moves or whatever else, I don't think I'm at, I'm at risk of um, hitting anything. So much more comfortable with it, but overall the side fit really well. Um, no, no fitment issues at all. Close in a couple spots, but looks, looks pretty good. The other thing I tackled here is my heater core lines. So that's what you see here. Those are all hooked up. Everything looks good, nice and clean. For this one, this one, so part of the the, the issue um, between the Colorado and the LS is that the Colorado for inlet and outlet has both 5 eighths, whereas the LS is gonna have one 3 quarter, I believe for the outlet, and then one 5 eighths for the inlet. Um, so you basically have to taper from three quarters down to five eighths. So for the one that was just five eighths, I basically bought the um, whatever Silverado, what LS version of the five eighths hose. So that's five eighths to five eighths, one continuous hose. It's already got this 90 degree bend. So that was that was easy. Looks clean. It's cheap off rock auto. Uh, the other one that I had to adapt. Um, the Colorado also has a three quarter to five eighths, which is basically just like a 90. Um, so I took the Colorado piece that starts out at three quarter, then use that, cut it after a transition to five eighth, put a, um, put a, you know, a connector in here, five eighths to five eighths, male to male connector, and then just attach that to some universal heater core hose. So, you know, five eighths, universal hose, down to connector, male to male, five eighths, connects to the Colorado piece, which is just, you know, basically 90. And then this piece tapers down to three quarter to give me the right size for, uh, for the outlet. So that's it for heater core. All right, so here's the power steering line solution that I came up with. I've seen a lot of other people do this, so I'm not taking credit, but um, basically took the factory low pressure return line, um, cut this piece off of it, uh, basically made two cuts with an angle grinder, kind of peeled it back, um, and that left me with just this, uh, this little kind of angled piece with a little barb on it. Um, took my factory low pressure hose, put that on there, so it'll be a nice short return run. It'll be easier to see once it's in the car. Um, but basically just really shortened up the return hose because the power steering pump is now um, a lot closer to the actual rack um, than it was in the Colorado motor. So low pressure is done. High pressure, the, the solution there really is to do a custom line. Um, just to get this thing running, I did test it and the, uh, the fitting, I have it taped up, but the fitting does fit in the LS pump. Uh, so I will be using this line um, temporarily, bent, kind of goofy, so it won't be pretty, um, but it will work. So power steering hoses are good. 
Um, everything should bolt right in once I, I get the actual pump installed. All right, so the latest thing that I completed here is getting the power steering pump and bracket um, onto the motor. So I'd actually have to, I had to buy a new power steering pump because the one that I had was from a van. Uh, just a note, if you get a van uh, motor, it'll likely have a power steering pump that has a remote reservoir. I did not want to deal with the remote reservoir, so I ended up buying one of these off eBay. Um, which has the reservoir kind of attached. So this is the normal, I think, truck style. Again, the van style has the remote reservoir. Um, I wanted to stay away from doing that. So I basically cleaned this thing up. Um, the, the challenging part was the lines. Just again, as a summary, um, it's basically a cut up stock return line that I'm using. So that one was pretty easy. And then I am using a stock feed line bent, uh, bent in such a way that it fits. Uh, it's definitely not pretty, but it fits. It's it's not it's not awful. Like I think this will probably be temporary until I until I can actually get a custom line made. But for the time being, I think it works pretty well. So let me show you guys from the underside. Um, but yeah, from I mean from the top, it looks pretty much factory. Not not much different than factory. All right. So from underneath, but you can see the line coming out of the pump here. And then it basically loops around and down um, and over here, kind of along the, the rack and then along the frame and then to the actual rack itself. So, you know, it's, it's not pretty. The line is, um, it's close to the header, but it's not awful. I'm hoping it doesn't get too hot. I do have some extra loom on there to help a little bit. I may have to put some, uh, some type of heat sleeve on there. Um, and then down here, I, I did end up using some zip ties to um, tie the line down onto the rack itself so that it wasn't hitting the oil pan, but it works. The, the big advantage here that I've seen other people that have commented, if you, if you make your own line from the rack to the pump, it actually ends up being a pretty short line. And because of that and the, and the extra fluid loss, your pump ends up whining. Um, so although not pretty, you know, this does allow the extra line, which I'm hoping will, will make sure that my pump doesn't whine. So we'll see. Like I said, likely a temporary solution. Um, I think I've made it as clean as I can, and it's pretty much ready to go. So now I can get the accessory belt on, get the alternator on, and the accessories will pretty much be checked off the list. All right, accessories are officially good. Belt is on, fits up good, nice uh, tension feels good. Alternator is on. Did have a small issue with the alternator. Uh, the plug, it was not the right plug. So current uh, accidentally wired up a two, two pin plug. The alternator for my LY6, you can see in there is a four pin. They actually sent me a um, little patch harness that converts them, so really no issues there. Their customer service is pretty solid. They didn't even say anything really. They just kind of put it in the mail and sent it to me. But yeah, accessories are done. Once I get the, the alternator wired up, I think I can, I can check this one off the list. Okay, so here is an interesting one. Um, problem I had to solve is the side of the dipstick tube hits the edge of the current mount. Um, if I would have known this, I probably could have trimmed that mount a little bit. I had no idea. I didn't see anyone, any posts or whatever about this. So I kind of needed to come up with a solution. Um, I have no idea how other people tackle this, but the dipstick fits in there, but it sits off of the head where Normally a bolt, I think about this size, would pull the dipstick into the head. Uh, that does not work. So I was trying to figure out, you know, it's, it's happy sitting out a little bit further because that, that motor mount doesn't allow it to go for all the way back. But I, I needed a way to secure it in here. Um, so I, I was looking at making a bracket. I was looking at a few different bolts that I had. I was playing with bigger bolts. I ended up finding these bolts from the 
Colorado transmission that are the same size bolts, not sure exactly what it is, but they have this uh, section on the back. So it's kind of like a double bolt with a smaller one on the back, um, probably for some type of uh, wiring bracket or something on the transmission. Long story short, this kind of saved my ass here. Instead of building a bracket, I actually bored out the middle of the dipstick um, the, the hole where it would mount to using a stepper bit probably I don't know took a, a couple additional millimeters off threaded this all the way in and this threaded all the way in um, bottomed out tightened it down a little bit allowed this dipstick tube to thread onto the back of that little bolt and then I just um, you know bolted that all down so you can see I'll try to get in here to show um, can see you know the bolt which basically just spaces the dipstick out from the head um, it's all on there it's super solid the dipstick comes out in um, not going anywhere I made sure that my plug wires I have the, the 45 degree angle plug wires I made sure that those fit in those seem to fit fine I should be able to get to my header bolts so all around using a old transmission bolt I was able to, to solve this problem and it's it's pretty clean um, so the only the only worry I have is that if the dipstick isn't completely seated down there it may leak so that will remain to be seen but for now it's clean it's done dipsticks on I have clearance around everything so if anyone needs to tackle this problem use these old bolts from your transmission sounds goofy but it worked for me all right radiator is in it was not easy um, public service announcement my wonderful Speedway motors fan shroud radiator uh, CSF radiator and Speedway fan that I was so proud of in my second or third video whatever that was uh, didn't fit so the the short story is that just the stack up once the radiator was in and the shroud and the fan hits the uh, the water pump you know the little dowel where the where the um, fan clutch clutch fan normally went so I tried to get it in a million ways did not work um, ended up actually flipping the fan shroud around um, which kind of gave me about a half inch of play back uh, everything's still pretty much bolted in the same way once I flipped it around you know my brackets down here lined up um, my my you know nut and bolt at the top lined up with the factory brackets so everything is good uh, the major issue is that I just have much less space now between the shroud and the radiator itself so it may impact cooling I don't know um, but all that being said it's in uh, I have a very very little clearance left between the uh, and it'll be hard to see there but there's probably a quarter inch there between the uh, water pump and the actual fan itself so it's right there if the fans got a lot of movement or if the motor moves a lot you know they're probably going to touch so this is obviously something i'm going to have to watch i'm hoping that they'll they'll be okay um everything is bolted in here solid and i do have clearance but it's just a little little bit of clearance so the main takeaway here is that if you guys decide to do the same thing i did again the shroud fits perfectly the speedway motor shroud that i talked about in my one of my last videos but i would go with a slimmer fan uh, I think I, I looked up the dimensions of this fan. I think this fan's a little over three. I want to say it's like 3.1 or three point something. Um, you probably want to get a fan that's closer to about two and a half. Um, that will allow you to get everything in and have clearance and use the shroud the way that it's supposed to be used. Um, but everything's in. It looks pretty good still. Uh, most people probably will have no idea and won't even notice that the shroud's actually backwards. It still looks really clean. Um, and I hope it works. If it doesn't, then it'll be back to the drawing board. I'll likely end up keeping the shroud and just buying a lower profile fan. But yeah, it is what it is. Radiator's in. Now I got to work on uh, radiator hoses. Okay, so for radiator hoses, uh, starting with the top hose. So needed uh, a way to vent the steam port. I had ordered this little... Uh, pipe from Speedway Motors. I think I actually originally intended to order it to run a coolant temp sensor, ended up figuring out that the coolant temp sensor 
not good to put it in in line with your uh, radiator hoses. So long story short, ended up finding an adapter that fit to the same size uh, to, to my pipe to the steam port and ended up using this as the way to vent my steam port. Um, this isn't perfect because the upper um, radiator, the, the inlet and um, on the water pump here are actually an inch and a quarter. This pipe was an inch and a half. Ended up, I had a few different hoses to play with. I ended up finding one hose that was fairly happy going on the inch and a half on one end and inch and a quarter on the other. So uh, this is pretty much the, the upper radiator hose. Uh, very good possibility once I get my intake in, uh, which I, I ordered, uh, that I will end up having to move this around. But right now, it's it's solid. Everything's happy. Basically just cut an existing hose I had, uh, clamped it on here with the, the steam port vent, and the upper hose is good to go. For the lower hose, I... See if I can get a good view. So I actually was able to find uh, a hose that I basically made one cut to and that in combination with an 18 inch piece of uh, aluminum pipe from Summit is my my lower radiator solution. So I basically scrolled through like Summit Racing's website for probably 45 minutes uh, just looking at a bunch of different hoses. Ended up finding this one hose. I will insert the part number and a, and a picture of it uh, here. I don't know exactly what application it's for, but it's basically got like two 90s um, in an interesting configuration and then also one bend that's that's greater than a 90. It's probably, I don't know, a 120 or something. Um, so I was able to make one cut in that hose and I used the two, basically the two 90s back to back, which go right here down to my 18 inch pipe. So this is a 90 kind of goes down a little ways to another 90 then that runs to the summit pipe it's a, I think an 18 inch one and a half inch pipe from summit and then that runs to this bend which was actually a little bit more than a 90 um, but you know it it worked out fine um, don't think it'll collapse or anything so we'll we'll see once uh, you know once we get the truck running and get coolant in it and pressure and whatever else but um, yeah I mean very clean like I said bought this one hose that I found Cut it once, put the piece of pipe in here from the piece of 18 inch pipe, which fit basically perfectly. And the lower is, is clean and um, looks good. If anyone's curious about anything else, I'll, I'll try to find uh, part numbers for you guys. So just leave a comment and, and I'll let you know. All right, I think I'm gonna cut this video here. Uh, it's a long one. I know it was a lot of me talking. I um, appreciate you guys watching. I know it's a bit dry, but the idea here is to try and go through um, kind of each one of the, the issues that you guys may encounter if you decide to LS swap a uh, Colorado, right? Um, that's why I'm kind of trying to make sure I go into detail on, um, you know, on, on everything, right? So like all, all the big stuff that you're going to have to do, uh, I'm trying to at least cover what I did and give some detail, part numbers, whatever else. So. A little bit long-winded, I get it, but uh, this is kind of meant to be a resource for, for other people. Um, I'm thinking there will at least be one more video of me buttoning things up uh, related to the, the swap. And then the, the video after that may be uh, my attempt at a start, um, or it may end up being two videos before an attempt at a start. It really depends on uh, how the videos kind of, how everything comes out um, once I, I start editing. Because um, there, although things are looking very complete, uh, there's still a fair amount of stuff that I have to do before I can actually start this thing up. So like I said, probably at least one more before start, maybe two. Looking at the list, there is a fair amount of stuff crossed out, um, and some of this stuff, like wiring, for example, is something that I I uh, have just been kind of doing as I go. But for the most part, you know, I'm probably got I don't know 40% of this list done. Still have a good amount of stuff to do. So thank you guys for watching. Uh, really, really appreciate you guys watching and um, subscribing. 
you guys want to keep up to date, just follow along and hopefully we'll get this thing on the road soon. So thanks for watching guys.